The Type 89 Grenade Discharger, sometimes referred to as a grenade launcher or light mortar. It is most famously and inaccurately known as the knee mortar, as some Allied soldiers believed it could be fired propped against the leg, but this was pretty dangerous and could bruise or even break bones. On film these weapons are pretty rare, but tens of thousands were made and distributed to Japanese troops used throughout the Pacific. The Imperial Japanese Army issued three Type 89s per platoon, making it the most widely used infantry fire support weapon. It was also popular with Japanese paratroopers, as it was light and easy to set up. It weighs about the same as the Thompson submachine gun, at 4.7 kilograms or 10.5 pounds. The Type 89 could be operated by a single man, or a team of three, where it could reach a rate of fire of 25 rounds per minute. The 89 could also fire incendiary and smoke shells. The Type 89 served the Japanese military from 1929 all the way to the end of World War II, with the Type 10, the 89 smoothbore predecessor, entering service in 1921. The Japanese army really liked the Type 10 and 89, as they were focused on combat environments that were close range, such as urban environments in China and jungle warfare. Logistics were also of great concern to the Japanese. The Type 89 was extremely easy to transport through the jungle, compared to larger mortars which required transport of the heavy base plates separately. Making logistics even easier, the Type 91 hand-thrown fragmentation grenade could be adapted to fire from the Type 89 mortar. The launcher would typically fire either these fragmentation grenades or the Type 89 50mm shell, an impact detonated shell. When fired from the Type 89 discharger, Japanese hand grenades were fitted with a propellant at the base. They did not explode upon contact. Japanese grenades used percussion activated delay type fuses, initiated by pulling out a safety pin and striking the top of a cap, which is why you see Japanese soldiers hitting their grenades before throwing them so often in movies. The force of the grenade launched from the tube, however, was enough to activate the fuse without having to strike it against anything. This also meant a soldier could adjust their fire even after dropping a grenade into the tube. To decrease the range, the range control head is turned clockwise. To increase, turn counterclockwise. The support plate at the 89 is curved. It's designed to be set at a 45 degree firing angle, with the range adjusted by changing the size of the variable chamber space inside the discharger tube. The tube would simply be shortened or lengthened to decrease or increase the velocity of the round, and therefore the distance it fired. Because the Type 89 used a spring-loaded lanyard-operated firing pin mechanism, in an emergency it could fire grenades or shells at point targets, while braced horizontally against a tree or building, though ideally not braced against a human body. The Type 89 was rifled, and the effective accurate firing range was about 120 meters, or 131 yards. The biggest downside of the 89 was that the projectiles, like the weapon, were small. So too was their lethal radius. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this video on the Type 89 Grenade Discharger. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next one.